Okay, in this video I want to talk about factoring using the greatest common factor and in this video I want to do examples where we have to factor out binomial expressions. So sometimes this is enough to throw people off uh, when they see things in parentheses, but the idea is exactly the same. So in this case what I do, um, again kind of what I'm recognizing visually I see a 3x squared times a set of parentheses, this 2x plus 5y. This is all one term. The 3 is a factor, the x squared is a factor, and then to me I see the 2x plus 5y is a factor. Likewise, we have another term. I see a 7 as a factor, the y squared, and the quantity 2x plus 5y as a factor. Okay, so when I go to factor things out, again, the first thing I think is, you know, what's the greatest common factor of 3 and 7? Well, the, the biggest number that divides evenly into both of those is just positive 1, so there's really nothing to factor out. I see an x to a power in the first one, but the second, uh, the second term has y's, but no x's, so I can't factor out any x's or y's. But I do see the same thing in parentheses. I see this 2x plus 5y. That's the thing that is in common to both of them, so that means we can factor it out. Okay, so I'm going to pull out this quantity 2x plus 5y, and then I need two things. Uh, since I have two terms originally, one term, two terms, that means in the parentheses I'm going to need two terms as well. And again, just to when you factor, to me, you know, I kind of imagine. You know, in my head now, I've pulled this thing out, so it's gone. So what's left? Well, in the first term, the only thing that's left is 3x squared. So that's what I would need um, to be the first term in the set of parentheses. And likewise, for the second factor, since I pulled out the 2x plus 5y already, the only thing that, that I still need is the plus 7y squared. And now we factored out the greatest common factor. It was a binomial. Um, 3x squared plus 7y squared definitely doesn't factor um, any further. All right, so same idea in the next one. Um, we have a 5x squared x plus 3y minus 15x cubed x plus 3y. Same thought, thought process. I see one big term, and then I see another big term. So I think 5 and 15, well, the greatest common factor of 5 and 15 would be 5. Then I say, oh, they both have x's to powers. There's an x squared and an x cubed. Again, we have to pull out the smaller exponent, which would just be x squared. And then I also notice, hey, there's an x plus 3y that's in common. So I can also factor that out. Okay, so in this case, we factored out a lot of stuff. So I think what needs to go back in the parentheses to give me my original thing back? Again, since there's one, two terms, I'll need two terms in there. You could always think about there having been, uh, you know, we could multiply the first term by one. And if we use the same idea about kind of thinking, well, what did you factor out? Well, we factored out the five, we factored out the x squared, we factored out the x plus three y. The only thing that's left would be the times one. So that's what I'm going to need as my first term in the parentheses. And again, if you multiply all that stuff by 1, it'll just give you exactly back the, uh, the, the, first, the first term in our original expression. So then I think 5 times what is negative 15? Well, we'll need a negative 3. x squared times what is x cubed? I believe we would just need an x. And again, we've already factored out the x plus 3y, so we've already accounted for that by factoring it out. So again, let me move my parentheses in here a little bit closer. So it says if you factor, you could factor the second expression as 5x squared x plus 3y, 1 minus 3x. So factoring is definitely something that uh, I think it takes most people, I'm sure myself included, to get a good handle on it. It's something that as long as you're doing any sort of algebra, pre-calculus, calculus, um, statistics, um, factoring doesn't go away. So it's definitely something that I think uh, I recommend to people to, you really want to practice and make sure you get as good of a grasp on it as possible. Um, like I said, this is one of those things that just doesn't go away and it's something that you want to be certainly familiar, familiar with um, in a variety of situations.
So, all right, anyways, I hope these examples help and make some sense.